So, hello, I am Jade, and today I am going to talk about finding things in the sources. So, as you may be aware, there's a lot of those. And um, so, I am an author of many tools for getting through the sources, including NixDoc, which should not be confused with NixDoc. Um, I use Haskell and Rust and Nix together a lot, and I use NixOS. So, I believe that the sources are for everyone. Yes, we should improve our documentation. There's lots to do on that. But I also think that a lot of people can use the sources with Nix. They can package things. They can make their own modules. And there is a bit of witchcraft to navigating the source, and there is a lot of it. But with good tooling, the sources of docs might be faster than the docs, which we should have more interactive docs. So there are 2.94 million lines of Nix in Nix packages, which is a staggering number. So what we're going to talk about today is using uh, static analysis with Nix, using dynamic analysis, and then um, getting around NixOS projects. So for static analysis, this is just, I'm considering this to be any method that takes 15 seconds or less and doesn't involve running any code. So this is sort of the first line of defense. You try this first, and if it works, then you're good. Um, you can, of course, grep it, um, but I am showing the fancy ways because those are sometimes faster. So for those who aren't aware, there's a new language server called NixD. Um, it has completion for options. It has completion for Nix. Um, it has pretty good go-to definition, but not on everything. And it is in Nix packages, already packaged, so I would recommend using it. Um, but it doesn't evaluate everything, and you need to set it up per project. So, for example, I was working on Nix packages and looking at NixDoc the other day, and this is what you have to set in a file in the repo that you're working in. So let's just do a quick demo of that. So here we just have an editor open on the uh, NixDoc packaging, and so we can go to definition on Nix there. I just hit the go to definition key. And this is the JSON that you need to set up. But unfortunately, it doesn't work on everything. So if we, for example, try to go to definition on fetch from GitHub here, it will give it the argument of this function. And this is partially just due to limitations of um, the internals of Nix. So let's talk about C tags. So C tags is this extremely old and very simple source code index. Um, it is most associated with using like with C scope or like sort of old school C navigation, but it's also useful if you just want editor tooling and you can't get stuff to work. And so it gets through abstraction by being naive. This can be generated by basically traversing a parse tree and then you can see the output of it is just a bunch of lines with an identifier and then a file and then the line. So it is, it is that simple. So as far as using C tags on Nix, this is possible. Um, I've written Nix doc C tags, which traverses Nix ASTs and generates tags for all the identifiers in them. And then you can tag jump or control right bracket or et cetera, depending on your editor. So let's demonstrate that. So I'm picking a particularly tricky case. So I'm going to do um, go to definition on fetch from GitHub. And so this gives you a gigantic list. But if you just kind of skim it very quickly, you can at least cut it down to only results that matter, and then specifically number 48 in this case. <laughs> and, but it does get you the result. And then we're going to show also that it does work on other things that don't work in NixD. For example, um, if we go to this license, we can just get there directly. So for static analysis, first try a language server, then try C tags, then try ripgrep. Um, and this should get you pretty much any identifier in Nix packages in about 15 seconds, assuming that it is not a weird one. So, however, unfortunately, we are not always having a good time. And so in this case, we can also use the REPL to find things using Nix itself and using the information that Nix has. So Nix knows about the locations of functions, and it knows about the locations of... Um, definitions in attribute sets that exist syntactically. So for example, if you have like an attribute set written down on the page, uh, instead of something generated by gen atras or map atras, 
then it will know where that definition came from. So as far as using the REPL, um, this is probably review, but you can, the one thing that may not be well known is that you can call an E and then the sum expression that evaluates to a derivation or a function, and it will open that immediately in an editor, which is pretty cool. Another thing you can do is you can get docs for built-ins, just like directly as you work, um, which is really awesome. And unfortunately, however, oops. So this is because of some feature requests that have been sort of long-standing, and it is a consensus building exercise to find what documentation format we want to write in our Nix sources. And since that's not been figured out yet, there is not support for definition or, uh, documentation on functions in the REPL built-in. However, plugins. So as Yorick discussed yesterday, you can reuse plugins on Nix. And um, I have one of those. And what it does is it adds a built-in where you can give it a function, and then it will just go and find that in the sources, dump out all the docs above it, and give it right to you, as well as the location that that function is defined. Uh, so let's demonstrate using dynamic analysis in general. So here we're going to, again, pick on fetch from Gitty this time, where we are going to look at it. So this is wrapped. Uh, you can see there's a, the functor is defined in lib, so it is wrapped, so we can't really find it easily. And so here we get out the sort of big hammer, which is unsafe get attribute position. And so you give that the name of the attribute and then a package set or a um, attribute set. And it will tell you exactly where that is defined in the attribute set. So we can go to the line that it gives us in the file that it gives us, and then that is where it is defined, at least closely. It doesn't give us the exact position, just sort of somewhere approximate to there, and so you can sort of go up a level if you can't find where the um, end level is, right? So you can also use the debugger. So if you have like a value that you're trying to find a attribute inside of where it is passed into your function, then you can also use uh, the debugger to get, to interrupt the Nix interpreter in the middle of things. Uh, there's unfortunately a bug in this where in certain cases you just don't get any context. So there is not particularly any way of getting information there. So in terms of dynamic analysis, you can use colon E. It works pretty well most of the time, except for when there are wrappers, and it doesn't help if you have attribute sets, where what you're looking for is an attribute set rather than a function or a package. Um, packages specifically will work, and functions will work. For when you're looking at sort of library functions, it is probably nice to use nixdoc with built-ins.doc. It will give you a very concise output, uh, but it has issues with wrappers. And if all else fails, you can always use unsafe get attribute position, which will get close even with abstraction. So now let's talk about NixOSC tags. So I have been working on a pull request to Nix packages where I am getting more precise definition or um, declaration positions of NixOS options. So what this entails is that we are adding a new output to options dot whatever dot, uh, now we have declaration positions. And so let's demo finding things in NixOS. So this is just, I have generated the C tags and so I'm just doing tag jump in, in Vim, but it will work in any editor that supports C tags. And then documentation.man.generate caches and bam, that's your, that is your uh, definition right there. And in order to generate this, you simply have to run a Nix build command and it will generate that. So uh, I would be open to reviewing that on the hack day tomorrow. Uh, another thing that you might want to find related to NixOS is why is this option defined the way that it is? So, for those who aren't aware, you can bring a NixOS configuration into the REPL and then inspect the outputs. And you can do this with this incantation. 
uh, Nix REPL dash capital I to set NixOS config in the Nix path, and then dash F Nix packages NixOS. The way that that works is that NixOS without using flakes evaluates NixOS config like in, in angle brackets to find where your config is. And so because of that, you have to do this, which is kind of annoying. Uh, on flakes, you can load flake dot in the REPL, and then it will give you your config. So let's show off some problem that you may recognize, which is that I have this simple config on the right where I have basically made it evaluate. And I have programs.fish.enable equals true, but my config is kind of slow to build. And we're going to find out why that is. So while looking at the build, I have found out that it's saying something about generating some kind of man caches. So let's go look at why that is happening, because it wasn't happening before I you know, did a whole bunch of other stuff that was unrelated. So what we do is we can look for the config.documentation.man.generate-caches option, which is true, which it shouldn't be. Where did that come from? So then we can look at what actually happened there. So in options. Dot, you can get various metadata about what is going on with a option. For example, you can find where it is defined, and you can also find where it is declared. And we can see also this gives us this ellipsis here, which is unfortunate. So if we use colon p, that will fix that in the REPL. And so we can see that fish did it. So got to, got to blame the fish, apparently. And then uh, I'm also going to show what I did with my PR. But first, let's just go and confirm that this is indeed fish is doing which it is. So yeah, that is how you can find that. And then let's talk about the thing that I have added, which is that you can now find the line numbers of definitions of options. And so this can be built into any tooling, including NixD. And I think one of the reasons that NixD uh, has sort of subpar integration with NixOS is because they don't have this information yet. So it has to evaluate it, but it can't actually get the line numbers. And so the go-to definition is not perfect. Anyway, that is all I have. Um, you can get the slides online, uh, and you can email me here. Uh, do you have any questions? Do you have any uh, particular strategies for how you would use grep when you need to use it? So there's various strategies you can use with grep, for example. Um, but it, it's not necessarily always the same strategy, especially if you are looking for, for example, um, definitions of things. You might have cases where it could be using literally any Nix syntactic uh, structure. For example, you could use the inherit from attribute set thing which would potentially be very confusing and make it hard to find things. And so usually what I'm doing when I'm using grep is trying to find the most unique identifier that is related to what I am looking for. And then hopefully that will cut down the number of results, because otherwise you just have an unmanageable number. Another thing you can do is sort of specifically grepping the directory that you think it might be near, and then looking for the results in there. Just a quick, uh, just a quick follow-up on that. Um, one suggestion I have is you have the identifier and then you do space equals. Because yes. In Nix, where you have the equals is very like uh, that's very likely to be the place where it's defined. Yes, and this this is essentially what Nix doc does, but with an actual AST, so it has no false positives. So yes, like that does work, but then you also have like other possibilities as far as what it can be that is not necessarily that. So it, it's just like, it, the idea is that it can reduce the number of false positives to a more manageable number. I think I can also implement some better sorting in there. 
Are some of the stuff you're adding to NixOS very well, obviously, for things that are built in NixOS, but yeah. for projects which have large amounts of their own um, Nix code, Nix expressions? Yes. Uh, what kind of the, what, which ones of these strategies are more appropriate for those kind of projects? Right. So um, actually, Nix.c tags doesn't really care what you put it in. So that might be an excellent option if you're looking for identifiers within your own project. Uh, for example, you can just search identifiers in your own project with that. And I think that that's probably one of the nicest strategies when you're working on your own code, because often, in my experience, it's been very hard to get at it in the REPL, because it's often nested really deep in a bunch of stuff. And so that's usually when the debugger is most useful as well for like getting into things, and then you can use unsafe get attribute position or colon E or et cetera for dynamic stuff. So yeah, my suggestion would be trying to like use uh, the Nixdoc C tags, and also if you have your own options, you can get those C tags for your options as well as the NixOS ones. Um, there's an attribute that is exposed by my PR, and that will be possible. I will have to document it, but it will be available. Another thing is like structure your stuff so that you can get into it from the REPL, instead of having it nested in a bunch of function calls. Yeah. Um, another question. Um, do you have any idea when we get a better copilot integration with that, or something similar? Uh, copilot? Ah. Like uh, any AI tool which helps to write code. Hmm. I don't actually know what data those use as far as getting like, um, as far as like project specific data. It would be very cool if we could, for example, um, pull from a, you could write a thing that would scrape a NixOS module set or something like that, where it would like go and essentially index, index uh, Nix code so that it could guess that maybe, you know, this object is of this type or something else. Like, I think that in general, like, trying to find unique identifiers in your project might be useful. It's been pretty quiet on Peter's side. You're making me walk again. <laughs> I get the reinforcement, then you make me walk. And uh, it's an odd problem, but we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> you go first. Uh, you said that uh, you don't have access to some of the identifiers when you do the debugger with the breakpoint? Yes. So there's a bug. I think it is where it is at a... If, if you have a definition that is in the top level of a file or something like that, then the debugger has no locals. So you just can't get anything. And I run into this all the time. Um, is that also if you do the trick where you pass in like your scope to, the, uh, to a f like a arbitrary uh, anonymous function? Uh, if you're passing your scope to an arbitrary anonymous function, I am not sure. I think that might be sort of a workaround, but yeah, it, I, to my knowledge, this is a Nix bug. Okay, uh, I'll do a follow-up. Uh, I'm often finding myself looking at Nix packages for usage, uh, usage examples for particular options, like how is um, uh, Nix uh, Engine X vhost, for example, configured regularly. Do you have a suggestion how to find these examples? Oh, uh, those those are really really annoying, and I think that like that would be something that would be an amazing use of the tooling because we have a lot of NixOS tests. And so if we wrote a tool, for example, that would go and use the options.star like uh, dot uh, declarations and look for any tests that declare those options. Because the, the thing is that like trying to grab them is a pain because you know they might be nested and it's really frustrating. So it would be really cool if we built a tool that would go and evaluate all of our tests and then for every option, it shows the test that it appears in. And then you could go and immediately jump to a test that uses an example of it. That would be a hack day idea.
my best guess is that what it is doing is that it is using the other Nix doc uh, without the dash, um, which is a, I think Yorick was alluding to it the other day uh, with respect to plugins, but it uses the Nix as a library and then tries and pulls all the docs out of it. And I assume it produces, I, to my knowledge, it produces a structured format that is then possibly consumed. And so I think that's what Noogle is doing. Um, I have a question. Yeah. It's dangerous to give me a microphone. I can hang on to the, the whole day, but thank you. Ah, there you go. Um, there are some other language servers, some other LSP projects, right, yes. apart from NixD. Yes. Do you know if there's any, uh, any work on any of those to maybe improve the experience? Because of obviously that would, that would make it better for every editor that supports LSP. Yes. Uh, so NixD is probably the most promising one to me. There has been a... So uh, Oxalica has written a, another one called NIL, uh, which is pretty excellent. But the issue is that it doesn't really do evaluation. And then there was a fork of that to try and do limited evaluation. But I believe that fork is abandoned because it was kind of a pain. And so NixD does the actual, it just takes the actual Nix evaluator. And so that one seems like the most promising approach, but then it has other limitations, perhaps parser recovery or similar. So I think the answer to that is that there might be, might be NixD is the answer. It might be generating indexes for uh, nil or others might be the answer to improve those. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.